What's up guys, welcome back to Bass Fishing Declassified. In this video, we're gonna have three anglers share their best tips for fall brush pile fishing in three different regions of the country. Let's get into it. For my fall brush pile tip, I'm gonna be covering lowland reservoirs in the south. This applies to lakes like Sam Rayburn in Texas, or really any lake in the DFW Dallas area. You got Joe Poole, Ray Roberts, a bunch of different lakes in that region. Also Lake Eufaula over in Alabama, and a lot of lakes in central Arkansas. Basically what happens on these lowland reservoirs in the fall is that the thermocline will start to disappear. What happens then is some of the bait fish are gonna to push to the backs of the creeks, but this isn't going to cause all of the bass to move to the backs of the creeks with them. Instead, some of the bass will actually stay more towards the main lake and get around very deep brush piles feeding on crappie and bluegill. This is a pattern a lot of guys don't really focus on in the fall, and it's not a way to catch a bunch of numbers, but it, you can catch some big ones doing it. The brush piles I'm gonna be targeting are gonna be in anywhere from 20 to 40 feet of water, even when the water visibility is only two to three feet of visibility. The reason I'm targeting such deep brush piles is because oftentimes the tops of the brush piles are only in 10 to let's say 25 feet of water. This means the base of that brush could be 20 to 30 feet deep, but those fish will set up in the top of that brush in 10 to 20 feet. And those are the fish I'm targeting, the suspended bass in the tops of those brush piles. Now, normally when I'm fishing brush piles in the summertime, I like to fish a bait like a football jig or a big worm, and I'll try to get it in that brush pile and try to get those fish to react to it as that bait is going up and over the limbs. However, in the fall, I'm really focused on those fish that are suspended over the top of that brush, feeding on the bluegill and the crappie that are in those piles. To do this, I usually target these fish with two different baits. One is a deep diving crankbait. My favorite option, especially on Sam Rayburn Lake in Texas, is a striking 10XD. This bait dives 20 to 25 feet deep, and a lot of those brush piles I'm targeting are gonna be 30 to even 35 feet deep at times on Sam Rayburn. What this crankbait does is it allows me to just barely tick the top of that brush pile by reeling that bait down to that 20 to 22 foot zone, just barely grazing the top of that brush. And anytime that bait deflects off that brush, you have a chance to trigger one of those really big bass that are there to feed on the bluegill and the crappie. I've had some really good days in October on Sam Rayburn with this technique. And you're not going to get a ton of bites doing it. You're just gonna get maybe one to three bites a day, but the bites you do get are going to be really big, five to eight pounders. Now, the thing about a crankbait that's a little bit tricky with this pattern is you have to have the perfect running depth crankbait to match how deep those brush piles are. This means if a brush pile tops out in 20 feet of water, you need the 10XD. If it tops out in 17 feet of water, you might need an 8XD, 15 feet of water, a 6XD, so on and so forth. If you don't wanna have that many crankbaits in the deck of the boat, another great option is to actually fish a swim jig over these brush piles. There. There we go, got that thing untangled there. And my go-to swim jig for this technique is going to be the Mega Bass Uoze Swimmer Swim Jig in the three quarter ounce and half ounce size. This swim jig is really interesting and I've talked about it on this channel before, but it basically has a little underspin on it. And it also has a very unique hook. It's more of a swim bait style hook than a jig hook with a lighter weed guard that allows it to deflect off of brush pretty well, but it also is light enough that the bass can crush that weed guard if they just kind of swipe at it. The heavier the hook and the shorter the hook, the harder it is to get a hook set on those fish in 20 to 25 feet of water. You know, when you cast the bait, 80 to 100 feet away from the boat. So this is definitely my go-to offshore swim jig. What I'm gonna do with this bait is pair it with a swim bait trailer like this Kitek 4.3 or 4.8 inch swim bait and just work it over the top of that brush. I'll cast it out, let it sink down to the 20 foot range, 15 foot range, however deep the top of that brush pile is, and then reel it in nice and slow until I hit the brush. Once that bait hits the brush, I'm going to work it up over the top of that brush, swimming it just over the top, over those limbs. And if there's a bass there that's ready to eat, it will choke the swim jig. A lot of times a swim jig will also work better than the crankbait when you have less wind and less clouds. So if you have sunny bluebird sky days, low wind, the swim jig can oftentimes get a few extra bites. But if you have those windy cloudy days, the crankbait can be your go-to option. For the swim jig, I'm pairing that on a seven foot six 
medium heavy power Denali Covert Light Warm and Jig Rod with 16 pound Sunline FC Sniper Fluorocarbon and a 631 Black Max Reel, 50 bucks. For that big 10 XD, I'm gonna be throwing that on a Denali Lithium Pro Magnum Crankbait Rod. It's a seven foot 10 extra heavy power, moderate action. This bait is best paired with a long rod that has a pretty stout backbone because it is a heavy bait. And I'll pair that with 14 pound FC Sniper Fluorocarbon and a five to one gear ratio max winch reel. Another $50 reel I found at Walmart. So those are the baits I like to throw for these suspended brush pile fish. And it's a technique guys that a lot of guys don't use because they're so focused on the shad in the fall. But if you wanna get a few extra bites and put some kickers in the boat, go back out to the main lake areas, find those deeper brush piles, target them with these baits, and you can put some big ones in the boat this fall. You guys may refer to them as brush piles down south, but up north, a lot of us call them fish cribs. And there's a reason for this. The local government, the DNR agencies call them fish cribs, and that's because they're putting them together, they're constructing them, and then they're putting them out into the lakes. That's because it's illegal for us just to make brush piles and take them out. I cannot go offshore and sink some debris in the water to create a brush pile. You have to get a permit to do it. You got to have approval from the DNR to do it in the state of Wisconsin. I can't speak about all other states, but it's much more common up north to not be allowed to put brush piles in the water. Now they hold fish every bit as good as the brush piles down south and a lot of times even better because they're not small brush piles. I've got a lake here that I love to fish where the DNR just put out seven new brush piles and they are massive. Each one is a massive brush pile because they took some trees that they cut down to do some uh, work at a local ramp and they just hauled them out. They put them out there on the ice and then when the ice thawed the brush piles sank so they're usually very good fish holding magnets. They have all of the key pieces that any brush pile down south will have. They, they grab heat during this time of year. They attract that, they absorb the sunlight creating heat. They also create shade, which blocks the sunlight. And last but not least, they create these, their own ecosystems, in which case you've got all kinds of forage species around. So if you have brush piles slash fish cribs in your lake up here in the northern part of the country, you really do want to fish them. During this time of year in the fall, they are a phenomenal piece of structure to fish. You've got a lot of fish that are starting to move offshore and these fish, fish cribs are generally sunk anywhere from eight to 25 feet of water. So they fit the bill in terms of being a fall piece of structure. A lot of the fish will end up just wintering around these pieces. Here's one tip for you too. A lot of lakes up here, most of the time when the DNR sinks fish cribs, they will mark the location. They may do that with a buoy on the water or they just may put the waypoints up on a website so that when you go to, to, when you go to a lake, you may wanna think about just Googling whether or not there's fish crib locations on that lake because the DNR provides, provides them right for you. It's a very good tip to remember. I've got two prime locations I like to look for fish cribs during the fall period. If it's prior to turnover, so when the water temperature is still in that low 60s to upper 50 degree range, I like to find fish cribs that are on the flats. It seems like that's where the active fish are gonna be feeding. So I'm gonna be looking in that, I'll say 14 foot of water or less. If it's after turnover, so you've got cooling water temperatures that are in the low 50 to 50 degree range, I like to move further offshore. I like to look for cribs that are on top of humps, at the base of points, any place where those fish might start using that crib as a wintering location is going to be what I'm looking for. And generally speaking, you're going to be in that 20 foot to 35 foot range. I've got two approaches to fishing a brush pile. The first is if it's overcast and I've got some wind conditions, generally speaking, those fish will not be hunkered down tight to the brush pile or the fish crib. They're going to be suspended around it, roaming around the outside of it, using it as a home base. And when that happens, I like the fish moving baits. A spy bait, a crank bait, a spinner bait, a swim bait, those are all great choices to catch those fish that are around the crib itself. Now, if I've got sunny conditions, that's when I like to go with my bottom moving baits. I wanna go tight to the fish crib or the brush pile, try to get down inside of it, because that's where a lot of those fish are gonna be. So I'm gonna be throwing a jig, whether that's a casting jig or a football jig, I might throw a weedless Ned, I might throw a Carolina rig, a bait that I can get down into that fish crib will generate more bites when it's sunny out. 
Really quick, if you enjoy the content on this channel and are looking for something to listen to while you drive to the lake or while you're at work, check out the Fish the Moment podcast. We upload the audio from all of our YouTube videos as well as our live streams to the podcast. You can find it on Spotify or on the Apple Podcasts app. While you're there, leave us a five-star review. Now back to the video. I'm going to talk about how you can catch fish in brush piles in Highland Reservoirs in the fall. Now you just heard about Johnny, how he fishes brush piles in the lowland reservoirs, and you can use that same tactic in the highland reservoirs as well. But I don't really like to target them brush piles on the deeper main lake. They will catch you your bigger fish, as he said, but I like to target the brush piles in the middle, the back section, half of creeks. These brush piles are gonna be shallower, and what I like to do is follow your creek ditch into these middle to back section parts of the creek and find these shallower brush piles that are related to the ditch. They can be right there on the edge of the ditch. They can be up there near the flats that go in the back of these creeks. These brush piles might even be seen out of water right now with the conditions we have this year where there's not any rain at all. The lakes are coming down and you will see some of these brush piles, the tops of them will come right up out of the water. When I'm looking for these brush piles, I just like to idle in the back of these creeks, use my side and down imaging, and if I see bait near the brush piles, those will be the brush piles that I will target. This time of year, each creek could be different with the bait migrating, and if I get to a creek and I see the brush piles and there's not any bait around, I'll just go ahead and mark them and keep that in my mind for either later in that day of the trip or next time I come out to the lake. Now there are two lures I like to use to target these brush piles. The first one's a jig. And y'all have heard me talk about Johnny's offshore jig quite a bit. And I was going to share y'all another jig that I do like to throw. It's the six cents hybrid jig. The th reason I like this six cents hybrid jig is because one, it has a big hook on it. You can see it right there. It's a big, strong hook. The other reason is this is a d diverse jig. You can swim it. You can fish it in brush. You can swim it around brush. You can fix it on hard rock structures and you can flip it. Since that's why the name they gave it hybrid jig. My gear that I use to throw the jig with is a Denali Covert Light 7.6 medium heavy worm and jig rod. My line that I use is a Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon, either the 14 or 16 pound range. Now the other lure that I'm throwing at these brush piles, and I just started it this, uh, this fall, actually the past couple fishing trips, is the Nico rig. Now the reason I'm throwing the Nico rig is because of Johnny. I've fished with him too much and he's caught fish with it. I've made the videos for Fish the Moment and I'm finally giving this guy a shot. Now, as you see, I'm throwing the Nico rig with a little bit different setup. And the, the thing that I changed and I'm trying and testing right now, and I have caught some fish, is putting a little Colorado blade on the tail. So I cut the tail off, I put this Colorado blade on there, and I have caught some fish with this lately. Now, I haven't caught any big ones yet, but this right now is my other tactic that I'm using to throw at these brush piles. Y'all, I'm throwing this on a Denali Covert Light 7.2 medium heavy worm and jig rod. I'm actually using 10 pound uh, Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon. As you see, I got on a bait casting setup here to where Johnny and I know a lot of other professionals will throw it on the spinning rods, but I don't have many spinning rods. That's something I know I gotta get better at, but uh, I'm throwing it on a bait casting setup. Another tip or idea you can do to target these brush piles in the middle of the back halves of the creeks. Uh, like I said, some of these brush piles you won't be able to see with your eyes and they're still down there in that depth range, but those shallower ones that I talked about that you can see that are out of the water halfway out to or even just the top of it out, you can actually go target these with top waters. I know a lot of people down here, man, in, in the central Arkansas region will throw buzz baits at them. And man, that's a fun bite. There is a timing deal for it to happen. As of lately, you know, we, we, we've kind of had a couple cool nights. We've had some warm days. I mean, y'all, yesterday it was 85 degrees but when it gets to a consistent cooler weather man that top water bite on them brush piles is fun don't don't forget that you, that you can do that you don't just got to go and throw your slower baits like the jig and the worm but you can bring fish out of those brush piles with a buzz bait or top water of your choice and that's it for this video guys hopefully you learned some new tips about how to fish brush piles in the fall if you enjoyed leave a like down below it really helps us out if you haven't already subscribed to the new bass fishing declassified youtube channel we've just got this channel started you may not be subscribed so if you're enjoying this content and want to see our weekly uploads from anglers in different regions of the country sharing their expertise go down below and subscribe so that you can see all of our newest content thanks again for checking out this video we'll see you all in the next one